Hey, what's going on everyone? Jay here, and with the summer months upon us, or just about upon us here in California, it's starting to warm up periodically. Uh, it's been a long time since I've really done like a lot of stuff regarding water cooling and heat dissipation and all that. So this summer I will be doing an entire month of water cooling where most of the videos will be something to do with water cooling. But I figured why not go ahead and kick off the video with a topic that I haven't talked about in a while, and that is actually how your computer interacts with your room or your environment so that you can try and have the most comfortable gaming experience possible. Because well, we, we get so caught up in keeping our PCs as cool as possible, but we forget. Second time didn't sound like a drum. We forget how this thing is actually a mini heater. The Height Y70 Dual Chamber ATX PC case provides users the familiar look and feel of the Y60, but with an increased component compatibility and thermal performance. With four unique colorways and a beautifully crafted three-piece panoramic glass, the Y70 provides a clear window into the heart of your PC. Its expanded four-slot vertical GPU support with an included 4.0 PCIe riser cable provides ample room for the largest graphics cards, while additional space between the edge of the card and the glass provides improved airflow. Up to three 120mm fans can be mounted below the GPU to provide provide a direct path of cooling, while up to 360mm AIOs can be mounted to both the top and side. Y70 also provides up to 180mm of clearance for air coolers. To learn more about the Height Y70, visit the sponsored link in the description below. So if you live in a cold environment and in the winter time, you probably appreciate the fact that the computer puts off a significant amount of heat, but if you live in a hot environment like I do, uh, the summertime can be almost unbearable by having you know your computer in a bedroom. Now, this video is gonna really be for people that have smaller spaces that are, their computers reside in. People that maybe have turned a bedroom into an office or a bedroom into a man cave or a gaming room or you have a small little cubby where you put your PC like under the stairs or something like that. So we're gonna talk about a few things because I get these questions every single year. And one of the most common questions is, I've upgraded the cooling of my computer and my CPU runs even cooler now. So why is my room hotter? Now there's a lot of mathematics we could talk about in this video. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible, but specifically if you're interested in diving deeper into the equations on how this stuff sort of works, you'd wanna look, look into thermal design power. And what that basically means is everything has a TDP associated, which is thermal design power. And you'll, people often interchange those as a, uh, unfortunately incorrectly with, total board power, a TBP. So like if we're talking about GPUs and total board power, that's how much power in watts does it take to power the GPU or the whole board, the RAM chips, the VRMs, the fans, the lights, all of that. Has nothing to do with thermal design power, which is how much heat is generated by the component itself. Now, of course, everything in a computer gives off heat. Everything from the most hot devices like the CPU and the GPU, uh, but even the devices that don't seem like they give off much heat. The RAM, your SSDs, even your spinning hard drives or your, your SATA SSDs, any sort of lighting in there. Um, every single little component on your motherboard generates heat. Now all of that heat combined would be the total thermal design power of your system. So there's some math that you can do to kind of figure out like what is the actual heat source or the heat load of your computer as a whole. Now obviously that's gonna vary depending on your components. If you're running very hot components that on average run hotter because they're higher you know, tiered, higher spec parts, like a 14900K is gonna give off much more heat than say a 13100F, right? Because the total power of that, that part is much higher than the other. Not to mention the lower part would be much more energy efficient, needing much less watts to create, uh, you know, it's, to do its tasks versus something that's a high end like this um, which is gonna be putting off a lot more heat. So for instance, if the CPU is drawing like 300 plus watts to do its job, it's generating a pretty significant amount of heat. Uh, same thing with the GPU, especially if you're running something like a 4090 or a 4080 or a 3090 or a 3080 or any of those GPUs that are well over the typical 250 watt it was in the past, now running 320 watts, 350 watts, 450 watts, up to 650 watts. You can see how that amount of power combined under load would definitely start to create an issue for your room. Now, if you're running a high-end gaming PC that under full load, let's say you've overclocked your graphics card and it's water-cooled and you've got all the components in there generating heat, you can have as much as a thousand plus watts of actual heat being generated by the computer itself. We'll talk about how that heat makes its way into your space in a second. But did you know most of those mini electrical heaters that you would put like by your office you know, desk or something like that, those little electrical plug-in heaters to keep you warm, or anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 watts worth of heat being doing nothing but heating a coil and then having a radiant uh, reflector reflect that heat out to you. 
you can see how this is pretty similar to that, only it's a different source of heat. We're just not heating a coil and then using a mirror to bounce it back at you to, as like a satellite dish of focused radiation heat. Um, did you know most microwaves are about a thousand watt? Most gaming PCs that are high-end pull more wattage under load than a microwave does to heat up your food and cook all the good stuff out of it, but whatever, that's besides the point. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, the, the process of that heat making its way into your room. So our graphics cards have fans on them. Our CPUs, this instance here is a, is a Be Quiet air cooler. It's nothing more than a, a device that's designed to take the heat or transfer the heat from one component to another and then transfer it again to the environment. And how that heat gets transferred is a bunch of different ways. So in both of these instances here, we have air coolers. So it's an air cooler on our CPU with a fan pushing air through it. And we have a single fan on our GPU. I think it's a single fan. Yeah, that's a single, nope, two? No, single fan GPU, sometimes three fans, sometimes four fans, depending, which is, again, gonna be transferring heat from the die directly to that heat sink. Also heat being picked up from the VRMs, heat being picked up from the memory chips, heat's being picked up by the MOSFETs, heat's being picked up by some of the SMDs on the board that might get hot, little controllers and such, voltage regulators and all that sort. Um, those are also transferred to the cooler. And then that heat is then just expelled through those fins. All those fins do is design, are designed to give a larger surface area. The more surface area we have of metal, the larger volume of heat that component is able to absorb. There is a, a, a limiting factor to how much a material can absorb. So heat sinks like this tend to do a pretty good job on mid-tier to lower-tier parts. Higher-end parts have better heat efficiency when it comes to transfer of heat when you go to water cooling because water in its thermal design has way more capacity of heat that it can hang on to and transfer, and it does it very quickly, uh, than, than air and metal does like this. But again, you still have to transfer from those radiators that heat out of it. So maybe it gets picked up in one spot and expelled in another spot. In a water cooler, that would be the radiator. In an air cooler, it would be the hot plate, through the vapor chambers, through the fins, fan blowing air through it. And as the air moves through, it picks up the heat because heat moves from hot to cold. People often get that wrong. People often think cold moves to hot. It's the other way around. Hot moves to cold. So that's why you have the heat transfer that way. Now also too, uh, your refrigerator works very much the same way. Although a refrigerator, is not really designed to re like move heat out. It's designed to move temperature from ambient to below ambient, but it doesn't do good with trying to remove heat from things that are actively creating heat inside of it. Every time it's, Jay, build a computer in a refrigerator. It's like, it's already been done a million times to show it doesn't work. It will overheat in there because the exchange of heat happening as the air is going through the system, getting hotter and hotter and hotter as time goes on, is only gonna increase the workload on the compressor inside of a refrigerator and then it will fail because it's not designed to do that. Now, right by this point, I think people are going, Jay, this is stupid. We already know how heat kind of works in the computer. Now we need to talk about how it interacts with your room. So like I already said, with the space heater or a, a little heater next to you, that just takes electricity, makes a coil incredibly hot, glowing red hot, and then it might have a fan to assist, but they don't tend to want to use fans because that kind of cools off the coil as the air is moving through it. They tend to have metal plates that just point it at you. In this instance, we're using fans to move the air out of the case that's been hot, but also to move air into the case that's fresh. Well, where does that hot air go? It goes out the exhaust fans on the top or on the back. It goes out of uh, the power supply and, or even through positive pressure, just out of the vents and stuff. So all that hot air is going somewhere. In fact, it, we, we demonstrate this with smoke right now, showing how it, air moves through a case. Remember, that air coming in is much colder than that air going out. Well, that air coming in comes from the same space that the air going out is in. So for instance, there is going to be some recirculation where some of that hot air is gonna mix back into the room and some of that hot air might get picked up by an intake fan again. But it's inevitable some of that air, unless it's completely segregated in some way, is going to make its way back into the system. Now, you only have so much volume in your room. If you have a, I don't know, let's say a three meter by four meter or a three meter by two meter room, something small, by whatever the height is, you can just take those three measurements, times them by each other, and that's the, the, the volumetric space in your room, whether it's meters or feet, whatever units you use wherever you're at. So you can actually figure out the calculation of what is the size of the air volume in your room. Now that exchange rate, there's a big mathematical equation that I was gonna show you on this. I actually have it in my outline, but I'm not gonna do that because there's no point because most people are not gonna sit here and do the math on this because most people are not going to build 
a specific HVAC for their room to remove, remove that kind of heat. But if you wondered how long it would take based on the current heat load of the unit, based on the current size of, of the air in the room, with no ventilation or whatever in that space, you could figure out how long it would take for the PC to heat the room up to equilibrium of whatever that max temperature is going to be. Now there's other factors here. What's the insulation like? I can tell you when I started this channel, and Nick will remember this, the room that I started in face west, and the west sun in the afternoon is the hottest, especially here in Southern California, and there was zero insulation in the walls of that house. That house was built in 1963. I had no attic insulation, and I had no wall insulation. If you put your hand near the wall without even touching it, you could feel the heat radiating through it, just going right through that wall. Not to mention I had multiple computers and multiple monitors and studio lighting and uh, TV. It would become absolutely unbearable to be able to be in that room and work in the summertime during the day without completely sweating balls the entire time. Because the insulation in that room meant that not only is the computer itself creating heat, so is the sun. And the sun is a much larger heat source, even through a wall, than the computer could ever be. I don't know what the calculation of the actual sun heat is. There's a big formula for that. I used to know it when I worked in energy. I don't anymore, but I can tell you my window, which was almost a wall-to-wall -wall window, was also a single pane plate glass window that also did absolutely nothing. So of course I did the look super janky, but it worked tinfoil in the window to help reflect a lot of that heat. But that's okay because 75% of the rest of that wall was just letting the heat right on through. So that stopped the sunlight, but it didn't stop the heat in that spot. So those, that's a factor to consider is the insulation and the direction your room faces, how much sunlight does it get? If you had a big shade tree right outside, it would be a lot less of an issue than mine, which faced in the sun all afternoon. The other thing too is what kind of ventilation do you have in there? Bedrooms are intended and HVACs in homes or HVACs or heating, ventilation and air conditioning units are designed to keep humans cool. They're designed to keep the room at a comfortable temperature for a human. And most bedrooms might have a TV. They might have like a, a set top box, like a direct TV or, or something like that. And they might, you know, an alarm clock and a bedside lamp, you know, maybe stuff like that. We're talking very, very low loads of heat. In fact, the biggest thing putting off heat in that room would probably be the human body. And an HVAC is designed to have the supply units or the amount of air uh, that is coming into the room be just enough to keep that room cool and balanced for the rest of the house so that the person inside there is kept cool. As soon as you turn that room into a gaming room and you load it up with a whole bunch of RGB lights and multiple computers and streaming rigs and TVs and consoles and maybe some uh, a stereo system or something, it's pretty intense on how much all of those 10 to 15 watt heat sources add up. And it quickly overpowers the amount of supply or cold air that's supplied to that room from your HVAC system. Now there's another aspect of that. That cool air is making its way in. It's already not enough based on the heat load that's in your space. That has to also be returned back to the pickup for the HVAC to be cycled through again to, make, to be made cold. If you shut your door because you're streaming and you got the door closed, you have now created a much lower airflow into there because it cannot, it, it, air in is gonna equal air out even if it's pressurized. And the amount of air that's being blocked by the door being closed means whatever goes through the gap at the bottom is all of the exchange rate that you're getting. So now your HVAC can't even have a chance of keeping that room cool because now your room is airtight. You can't get the cold air in there. You plus all your equipment in there is just incredibly overpowering that room when it comes to HVAC. Now I've also had a lot of people think when it comes to you know total room temperature, I've had people think that by water cooling their system and keeping it cooler, means that, remember, when I say cooler, I'm talking about the components themselves. By keeping the components cooler, they are trying to figure out why the hell the, ro the room still feels super hot. And I've had people say, my room even feels hotter. It's actually not. The amount of heat being generated by that component is the same, regardless if it's a water block or an air cooler. What's happening is a much faster exchange and more efficient exchange of heat. So more of that heat, it's making its way out of the components, right? So if your component was 90 degrees on air, and then at 75 or 70 degrees on water, that extra temperature didn't just disappear. It made its way into the water and into the radiators and then through the fans and out into your room. So what's actually happening is your room could potentially be a few degrees hotter even 
Maybe not so much unless the CPU was slowing down and maybe throttling a little bit at those higher temperatures. The equilibrium will basically be nearly the same. What you're noticing is your room getting hotter faster, which is giving you the impression that your room is hotter. So water cooling, and then what ends up happening is as the room gets hot, you'll notice those temperatures get right back up to where they were. It just takes longer for that to happen. So it's, it's kind of, it's really an interesting fun science. I would love to show you like a, a long-term chart right now of us being able to like show you how much a PC could heat a room. I put a 12 and a half ton AC unit in here for this very reason with a ridiculous crap ton of supplies and return. The fact that I can even cool the warehouse is because of the fact that I oversized the unit on purpose because of the amount of heat load. I even had to go round and round with our HVAC contractor telling him I need this size unit because of the amount of heat we create. He's like, you sure? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. So what can you do to keep your rooms cool? Well, stop blaming your computer. Unless you're willing to undervolt or underclock or go into your power settings and optimize turning them, letting them go very low speeds when not needed and let them more dynamically adjust. I don't do that. My computers run full speed all the time because I'm stupid and I think that that matters. It really doesn't, but I still do it. And then it gets very hot in my room. But uh, my room, to be honest, most of the time when I'm in there gaming, it's at night when it's cooler. And I pick the room in the house that I have for one reason and one reason only. It has nothing to do with the amount of size in that room. It's I have a window on each end of the room. So I can open both of those up and get cross flow. And what does that do? I live in a somewhat breezy area. It allows the wind that's kind of blowing against the window, pressurizing the room to push that heat out the other window and it works. So that's the reason why I do that. It allowed me to have a little bit of a nature's help on keeping that room cool, even if it's warmer. For instance, it, it would get up to 90 plus degrees Fahrenheit in my gaming room. But at night in the summertime, if it drops down to 80, you better believe I'm opening those windows and letting the 80 degree air come through because my little HVAC unit isn't doing the job. I've even considered doing a standalone like three ton mini split or something just for that room. But I don't know if I'm gonna keep that room forever as my game room, so I don't wanna go plumbing that all in, so that's why I haven't done it. Uh, you could get a wall unit. And now we're talking about ways to keep your room cool, but you could get a wall unit, a window unit, something extra. You would have to create a, a, an additional supplemental cooling system for the room that your computer is in if you have a game room that's getting far too hot. So unless you're gonna go in and turn down the efficiency stuff, you don't have control over the amount of heat this is gonna be generating. So what you have to take control over is how good is your room at dealing with the heat? So the things that you can do, insulation. Even if you only, if you say you're in an old home like I was, even if you only insulated that one room, you did the exterior wall there, however you do it, whether it's blown in cellulose insulation, or you actually rip the drywall off and put up the R R20 or R34 sheets or whatever. I don't know if it's R34, I just, I think Skyline. But anyway, if you put up the actual batted foam, you roll it in, and then you do um, attic insulation on top of it. Even if you did it in that one room, that would be a million times better because at least what you're doing is you're allowing the heat from outside not to penetrate that room. It will not change how warm the room gets due to your PC, that number is still a, a, an actual number that's gonna exist no matter what, but you can at least take that load from outside, the outside heat, the sun and all that out of the equation. You have to add an AC unit of some sort. So you have to counter the BTU or the, the TDP with BTUs. You have to, and it's funny how even uh, British thermal units, BTU, is a measurement of cold for ACs and stuff. So like I said, remember, everything's measured in heat, not cold. There's no, there's no cold rating for an air conditioner. It's heat rating. And it's the amount of heat that it can deal with in transferring and turning back into cold and, or the amount of heat it can remove from the air. So that you gotta, there's a lot of fun science there if you get bored someday. Um, the only other thing you could do is potentially move your computer to a more open area. What I started to say earlier is I wish I could have done an experiment where I showed you how the room temperature is affected over time with the PC under, under load and then take the total power of the system and then maybe reduce it and then show the difference in correlation. The problem is this room is, and where our rooms are is impossible to do that with because our ACs are far too big. But I wanted to make this video to give you guys some food for thought. And I know some of this might just be like, this was one big major duh. But if you saw the amount of comments and messages I get from people asking why the room still gets incredibly hot even though they upgraded their cooling, tells me there's a lot of people that are not thinking outside the box. And they have to start thinking inside the bigger box, which is the room that your computer is in. Yeah, I know people are probably already clicking off this video because I'm an idiot. I mean, that's really it. I wish I had more 
something more concrete to give you. Oh, concrete, it's a really good insulator, by the way. Actually, uh, I say that because I lived in a lot of different places until I figured out how to adult and get my life together. The apartment I used to live in was concrete. And fair, fun, fun fact, if you open the windows at night and got it nice and cool and you closed them during the day, that cool stayed in for a long time because concrete is an amazing insulator. You ever notice that even in like a hot warehouse, if you were to take off your shoes and walk barefoot on the floor, it would still be cold on the floor? I've done that here, that's why I'm saying that. I've walked barefoot on my own concrete floor. I was like, I pay for it. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> All right guys, what are your best keep your room cool um, techniques? I mean, I've seen some real creative stuff where I've seen people create vents that come off their PC and they have like heater hoses leading to the outside with fans in there to blow as much heat out as possible, which could help for sure. Um, I've also seen what happens when rodents find out they can use that as a way in too. There's other things to consider when you do that. So anyway, I live in the desert. Rodents are a problem, okay? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your best tips down below for people to be able to get ideas to keep their room cool. And uh, maybe I'll pin or favorite or heart the, the best ones down there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. <laughs> it's the outline. It... So with the summer month, of... it's hard to say. The summer month. It's like Mike Tyson. Like, the summer month upon us. <laughs>